Welcome to Stony Brook University. This is the first of five orientation podcasts designed specifically for new graduate students. My name is Caitlin and I'll be your orientation guide along the way. As a fellow graduate student and native Long Islander, I'm excited to welcome you to Stony Brook and help you get settled into your graduate program. In this podcast, I'll briefly introduce you to Stony Brook University, Long Island, and the surrounding areas. At the end of the podcast, we will hear from Interim Dean of the Graduate School, Dr. Chuck Tabor. I've designed each of the subsequent four orientation podcasts to give you information you need to begin a successful career here at Stony Brook. Part two will cover all of the important administrative policies and procedures, including registration, financial aid, and tuition. Part three will cover the various health insurance options on campus. Part 4 will introduce you to Stony Brook's library and technology facilities. And finally, Part 5 will cover several important elements of graduate student life on campus, including the graduate student organization, information on the student employee unions, and an interview with the graduate student advocate. With that, let's begin your introduction to campus. Stony Brook University is a really exciting place to be these days. Stony Brook is a young university, just founded in 1957, and the first PhD was awarded in 1966. Since then, Stony Brook has grown quickly to become one of the top public universities in the world. This productivity and the university's reputation are largely a product of the quality of Stony Brook's faculty and graduate students. As new graduate students, you'll no doubt contribute to the continued success of Stony Brook as you work towards your degree. Stony Brook has an award-winning faculty who are among the most productive faculty at public universities, as well as technical facilities that are rivaled by no other universities in the region and are among the top ten in the country for a public university. Recently, Stony Brook has been growing rapidly. In the last three years, Stony Brook has launched tremendous growth in its master's education programs. This gives Stony Brook the opportunity to greatly expand graduate education, as well as the opportunity to meet the needs of both the nation and the world for a master's educated workforce. Stony Brook has a number of new physical buildings on campus and intellectual centers that you may be involved in during the course of your research. New buildings and facilities on campus include the Charles B. Wong Center, which is a center for Asian culture and Asian American studies, the Simon Center for geometry and physics, the Laffer Center for Physical and Quantitative Biology, which unites research in physics, mathematics, and computational science to advance both biology and medicine, and the Center for Excellence in Wireless and Information Technology, the SUIT. Stony Brook University includes two satellite campuses at Manhattan and Southampton. At Stony Brook Manhattan, university members have the opportunity to take a variety of courses and to engage directly with New York City. At Stony Brook Southampton, there is a thriving graduate arts program, including a renowned creative writing program. Closer to home, Stony Brook is fortunate to have strong partnerships with other research institutions on Long Island, such as Brookhaven National Laboratories and Cold Spring Harbor Laboratories. Both of these major research institutions are within a half-hour to 45-minute drive of campus, and many faculty and students have close ties with research labs and projects at one or both institutions. Doctoral students have the additional opportunity to take part in the Inter-University Doctoral Consortium. This consortium allows Stony Brook University doctoral students to take classes from other New York area universities, including Columbia, NYU, and the City University of New York. The consortium allows for an intellectual community to develop and doesn't cost students anything beyond Stony Brook tuition. Long Island is a remarkable place. For those of you not from the area, well, it's a very long island, about 120 miles long and 15 miles wide. There are always a lot of things going on. Long Island has easy access to New York City and all of the events and activities you might want in the city that never sleeps, as well as its own unique activities and locales. The campus is situated right in the middle of the island on the North Shore in the Three Village area. Farther south and east, you have the Hamptons, which are a world-renowned vacation resort with fantastic beaches and unique shops, although these shops might be a bit out of the price range of a graduate student. The North and South Forks are home to Long Island's world-famous vineyards, and many of the vineyards have tasting rooms and tours. Beachgoers have a multitude of options, including rocky North Shore beaches just a short distance from campus, 
and sandy South Shore beaches, many of which are top-ranked surfing areas. And now, I will turn it over to Dr. Chuck Tabor, Interim Dean of the Graduate School, who has some advice for new graduate students on how to maximize your experience at Stony Brook. Hi, I'm Chuck Tabor. I'm the Dean of the Graduate School. I've been at Stony Brook for 24 years. I wanted to talk with you about the importance of relationships and balance. Many of you will form lifelong relationships in graduate school. These relationships will be with other graduate students, with faculty mentors, with dissertation advisors, with classroom teachers, with students from other programs. Uh, many of my best friends were formed in graduate school. This network of relationships is one of the most important support uh, structures for you as you build your academic, professional, and um, scholarly lives. Um, I have relationships with uh, graduate students that I was in school with that, um, I still, uh, that I still depend on in my professional life. I see, see people at conferences when I'm uh, producing a paper. I um, distribute it to some of my old friends who, who read it. I talk to my, uh, my dissertation advisor on a regular basis. And these are the sorts of things that will really help you uh, build your professional and um, scholarly lives. Um, I also wanted to talk with you about the importance of balance in your life. Um, when graduate students work on their research or in their class, classwork, um, they often become consumed with what's going on in their laboratories or in their studies. And uh, it's often tempting to um, ignore the rest of your life. And research and my own experience suggests that it's just, it's really important that you get out of the labs, get out of the library, get out of the classroom and spend some quality time with uh, other students in activities not related to your graduate studies. Um, it will help you to be fresh in your studies and it will really help you to keep your enthusiasm and excitement going and not burn out in graduate school. So I'm really happy to welcome you to Stony Brook. Uh, Stony Brook is a, uh, an exciting university and uh, we're very happy to have you as part of our community at Stony Brook. Thank you, Dr. Tabor. As I wrap up your introduction to Stony Brook, there are a few key contacts and online resources I want to introduce you to before we get into the nitty-gritty of administrative policies and procedures. The first two are your Graduate Program Coordinator, or GPC, and your Graduate Program Director, or GPD. You will get to know your GPC very well, as they will be your first go-to person when you encounter a problem. The GPCs on campus are very friendly and helpful staff members who would love for you to come by and say hi, even when you don't have a problem. But when a problem does arise, they are the first line of defense here at Stony Brook. Your GPD, on the other hand, is a faculty member who runs the academic side of the graduate program you're in. So if you have academic questions, for example about the requirements of your program or questions about your future career options after graduate school, your GPD, your advisor, and the senior graduate students in your program are the people to talk to. In podcast two, you'll be introduced to the graduate school, along with all of the important policies and procedures. Podcast five will introduce you to the graduate student organization, the graduate student advocate, and the student employee unions on campus. Every year, the graduate student organization produces a graduate student survival guide to help new students get situated and information on downloading a copy of the guide can be found in Podcast 5. This podcast and the others in the orientation series will be archived and accessible from the Graduate School website should you ever need to refer back to them. Finally, the official Graduate Bulletin is available online on the Graduate School website and contains all of the official policies and procedures for each program. Welcome to campus! Now on to Podcast 2 and Administrative Policies and Procedures.